In this start to finish video, we will be looking at a coil lifting device. Let me take a section view. In this particular model, we have the coil. We also have a ferromagnetic shield around the coil. And this lifting device is used to pick up an iron piece as you see here. Let us see how we can use SOLIDWORKS and EMS to simulate such a problem. Before we get on to the simulation, there are a few things that we must do as far as modeling the solid model is concerned. Let us first start with the coil. Now if you look at the coil, if I go ahead and isolate it, you can see that it is one contiguous annular ring. To define a coil in EMS, we need to be able to come up with a cross-section phase through which copper conductors will be wound together to form the coil that you see here. So to get that cross-section phase, we need to split this coil into two equal halves. Let's go ahead and do that. So let me open the coil geometry and then I will take the front plane and then I'm going to use the split command inside moles to go ahead and split the coil into two equal halves. Now, now that I have split the coil, I can actually go ahead and use the select other command to access this cross section phase through which the conductors pass through. So once the coil is created, I save it and then I go back to my original assembly. Now I have a coil which has two bodies. So this is the first thing you need to do. Whenever you have an electromagnet, which means you have a coil, you need to make sure that the coil is split into two equal halves so that you get access to a cross-sectional phase. The next thing that we need to do is to examine how the coil geometry touches the ferromagnetic part that it needs to lift or to find the force on the ferromagnetic part. Now if you look at it, so let's just go ahead and take a front view. If I zoom in, you can see that the core touches the ferromagnetic part. As far as FEA simulation goes in EMS, we need to have a small gap between the core and the part which it's supposed to lift. Why is that? Because we use a method called virtual work method where it is required that the component on which we are determining the force be completely surrounded by non-magnetic material. So we need to ensure that there is a small gap between the two. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to open or create a distance mate. Right now it's zero so that it's flush. So let's say that it's 0.1 inch, 0 0.01 inch and say OK. Basically, if I zoom in, you can see that there is a small gap and this is mandatory if you need to compute the right value of the force. Let me go ahead and rotate the geometry. So we can see it. Now we come to the last step before we do the simulation, which is to create the air geometry 
Why do we need to create the air geometry? It's because the magnetic field is not just going to reside in the ferromagnetic component, but it is also going to reside in the air in and around the coil and the other components. So it is important to create an air region in SOLIDWORKS so that this magnetic field can be captured by the FEA simulation. So to create an air region, we go ahead insert, create a new component. So I use the top plane and then I create a circle. By the way, the air region can is not just limited to being a circular region. You can have a square type of region as well. Then we go ahead and extrude. So here we can extrude in both the directions. And then direction 2 to 60 mm and say OK. So let me go ahead and so you can see that the air region completely covers both the components. One thing we can do is we can change the transparency so that you can see the extremities of the air region. Now there is one more thing that you need to do to complete the creation of the air geometry is we have to subtract all the inner components. So let me go ahead insert mold cavity. This is a feature that is used to I'm going to window select all the components there so you can see that the three different components, the two coil bodies, the plate and the ferrite is being selected in the cavity command. And then you can now, this completes the creation of the air region. Last I can go ahead and rename this and call it air. So far we have seen how we did three important steps. The first one is to split the coil into two equal halves so that you have access to a cross-section phase. The second is related to the component on which we are interested in computing the force. You need to make sure that that component does not touch any ferromagnetic or magnetic component. So you need to have a gap all around. So we created a very small gap between the lifting coil and the shield and the uh, core and the component which is going to be lifted and finally we create the air region and we use the cavity option to subtract all the inner components from the air region. Now this is all is required as far as the modeling is concerned for setting up this problem. Now that the modeling is completed, let's go ahead and look at how the simulation is performed. Simulation consists of several steps. To perform an EMS simulation, we first go to the EMS feature manager and we right click and create what is called as a study. Here we will select the magnetostatic study as the analysis type and we say OK. EMS automatically creates a feature tree for us. Here is where we will apply different materials to the different components. Right click on the air and say apply material. We can select air from the EMS material library and we can say apply material. So it automatically applies the material air to the air geometry. Next we select coil and then from the categories we open the conductor material and then we select copper and then we click on apply materials. Notice that when you click on apply materials it applies the material but still keeps the material library open. 
let's select the ferrite material and then from the non-linear folder we select AISS, AISI 1010 steel you can browse below to see the material properties and say apply material finally the plate is made of iron so we select typical iron and then say apply and close thus we have applied the materials to the various components next what we need to do is we have to go ahead and apply what is called as a coil to apply a coil let me go ahead and first isolate the coil this helps us to work just with the coil component we right click on coil and we select wound coil we select the components that comprise the coil here we have to select this cross section face at the exit port we say same as in entry port you can look to choose to see the preview this denotes the direction of the current so you can see how the current is applied we go to the general properties and then we select the wire gauge so we say 22 gauge and then we have almost 97 turns and it gives us a filling factor of 0.87 notice how EMS automatically computes the filling factor for any particular coil based on the wire gauge and the number of conductors that you select through the cross section then we apply the current in this case we apply a current of around 3.5 amps and then we say ok to apply the coil once the coil is applied we can hit the exit isolate button so that we get back to our geometry once the coil is applied we need to go ahead and request the program to compute the force and the force is computed by a technique known as virtual work hence we right click on force torque and select virtual work here we select from the screen the iron part that is supposed to be lifted and we say ok with this we have really completed the setup of the problem now what is required for us to do is mesh and run the simulation before we mesh let me go ahead and hide the air geometry and then focus our attention to the iron piece that the coil is supposed to lift to get the accurate force results on the iron piece we need to mesh the iron piece with a very fine element size often times we don't have to mesh the entire geometry with very fine element size we just need to mesh the major face where the force is going to be exerted in this case it is this phase circular phase annular phase where the force is going to be maximum so let's go ahead and create a mesh control where we apply say 0.1 inch to this particular phase and say ok now we can right click create mesh and then say ok this way we can understand and see how the mesh is created on this particular geometry you can see here that you have fine mesh on this particular face and we have coarse mesh in many of the other components now this works fine and then with this we can right click on study 1 select run 
and then take a look at the results once the study is completed. While the simulation is being run, there are a few things that I want to let you know about our solvers. The first thing is the solver makes use of the multi-core that is there in your computer. So if you have multiple cores, then the solver is quick. Next, we recommend a minimum of 16 GB of RAM. That will ensure a quick and a robust solution time. Now as you see, the solver has completed its solution. We can now take a look at the results. Now the results that we are interested in are number one, the force acting on the iron body. Number two is the magnetic flux density that is there in the geometry. So let's start with the force. To get the force, we can double click on the result table. And then we can read off the force acting on the iron piece. The major force is along the y-axis as you can see here and it's the negative y-axis indicating that the iron piece is attracted towards the coil and we get a force value of close to 504 newtons. Next we can go back and plot the magnetic flux density. You can see the magnetic flux density in the model. We can right click and then look at a section plot to see the magnetic flux density through a particular cross section as we see here and say OK. So now we can rotate and zoom in so that we can nicely see the magnetic flux density in the model. You can see regions of high magnetic flux density in the ferromagnetic core surrounding the coil and also in the iron piece that it's supposed to lift.